By one count, in the second half of 1942, there were 95,000 slave laborers used by German industry. Within that six-month period, it is estimated that 57,000 of them, or over 60%, died as a result of the conditions that they were forced to under again by German industry to stop hiding behind a wall of often meticulously constructed myths, denials, Die Bayerischen Motorenwerke, BMW. The Bavarian Motor Works, BMW. The success story of this auto giant is closely linked to this family, the Quants. They are considered to be the richest family in Germany. Estimated fortune, 32 billion dollars. We lead a normal life like any other family. No other family in Germany is as influential yet so discreet. There is hardly any video footage or photos of the Quan family available. They rarely make public statements. The Quans refrain from any media circus and remain silent, especially regarding their own family history. Is it just humility or are they trying to hide something? The silence of the Quants. BMW, no other corporation can pride itself with a comparable profit growth. With over 100,000 employees, the company has an annual revenue exceeding 90 billion dollars. How come the Quant family hasn't been able to face their past like others? Sure, they cannot turn back time, but they could deal with their past in a more appropriate way. During the Second World War, thousands of slave laborers drudged for the Quants. At that time, the factories were led by Herbert and his father, Günther Quant. They are exploiting those people who are displaced to Germany from all over Europe. Whether weapons or submarine batteries, Quant Enterprises ensure the power of the German war machine. At the center of their corporate empire, AFA, a plant for submarine batteries. Main shareholder and head of the company, Günther Quant. He also owns the German weapons and ammunition company. Patrick's Winterfall, the Mauserwerke, and Busch Jäger. After the Second World War, however, Quant claims he didn't know about the slave laborers. But not only slave laborers were exploited like here in Hannover Stöcken. All that remains today is polluted wasteland. No trespassing, mortal danger. Nothing remains of the concentration camp that was here since 1943. It was a part of the AFA plant. In the adjacent battery factory, which today is called Vata, concentration camp inmates had to assemble batteries for AFA. Concentration camp and production facilities formed an efficient entity in direct cooperation with the SS. Inmates were exposed to highly toxic substances. Many died of lead poisoning. Survivors suffered for a lifetime from the effects. During World War II, the level of coordination and efficiency in the Nazification of Germany was unprecedented. But the systematic extermination of people based on race and class may not have even been possible or not for the many corporate interests that aided and abetted the Nazis during the war. You know, for everything we learn about Hitler in the Second World War, the one thing that's conveniently omitted from history books is the role corporations played in the conflict. 
For example, the world-famous fashion designer Hugo Boss, who we can now all thank for the terrifying and now infamous black uniforms worn by the German SS and the brown shirts worn by the Hitler Youth, as well as an entire fashion collection for the Third Reich. While being a Nazi party member himself, Hugo Boss benefited greatly from the cheap labor of concentration in POW camps to manufacture the uniforms. Then there's Siemens, the multinational engineering slash electronics giant. See, during Hitler's rise in the 1930s, Siemens was used, used Nazi prisoner labor to build everything from railway infrastructure to communications and electrical power. In 2002, Siemens received international condemnation for its plans to trademark the name Zyklon for a line of home appliances that included gas ovens. Coincidentally, Zyklon is the same name as the deadly poison gas used to exterminate Jews at concentration camps. You might also recognize the company that actually manufactured the gas, Bayer. Next is IBM, or International Business Mechan Machines, excuse me. While the tech giant is now a staple of America's digital industry, during World War II, IBM played an integral role in carrying out the Holocaust in Poland. Thousands of documents archived in seven different countries have proven how this company knowingly worked hand in hand with the death machine. See, IBM produced punch cards for the Nazis, better known as Hollerith tabulators, which were the precursor to the IBM computer. And according to researcher Edwin Black, the Hollerith was used to keep records and statistics of the death camps, for example, calculating the rate of deaths per square kilometer of railway due to starvation. But despite the evidence of the company's sordid past and requests for a formal apology, IBM has kept silent on the matter. And then there's Chase Bank, now J.P. Morgan Chase. And while we don't need any more reasons to distrust this financial behemoth, between 19, sorry, 1936 and 1941, Chase, along with a few other U.S. banks, helped Germany with currency exchange. Unclassified documents from the U.S. Department of Treasury point to a disturbingly close working relationship between Chase and German authorities. In fact, in 1998, Chase finally acknowledged that its Paris office had preemptively seized nearly 100 Jewish accounts before German officials had even asked them to do so. But perhaps the most shocking example of the corporate Nazi connection is Ford Motor Company, Hitler's most prominent foreign benefactor. Yes, the legendary American entrepreneur Henry Ford was also a famous anti-Semite. In 1937, Adolf Hitler had a special medal created for foreign friends of the Third Reich, and the regime awarded it to Henry Ford that very same year. This might explain why Ford opened an assembly plant in Berlin in 1938, just before the war, which, according to U.S. Army intelligence, produced vehicles designed for troop transport. But these are only a few examples of the handful of corporations that ensured the success of the Holocaust. And thankfully, Hugo Boss and Siemens have set up a compensation fund for the victims of Nazi Germany. But look, while we learn a limited scope of how the Holocaust happened and why, we must acknowledge the role corporations played in these unimaginable horrors. Only then can we begin to hold accountable the many corporations that continue to profit from war and genocide today.